Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a pretty exciting discovery of the closest black hole to planet Earth, a black hole that was only theoretical and most scientists didn't actually think would exist. But at least one scientist, whose paper you can find in the description below, truly believed they must be out there and it looks like they finally found it after all. And so let's discuss this discovery of the black hole the scientists currently refer to as the unicorn, mostly because it's rare and also because it's located in the constellation of Unicorn. And also let's find out what makes this particular unicorn black hole so special. But first of all, generally we usually detect black holes by their emissions. Even though they are called black holes, they do produce a lot of different emissions through the interaction of matter nearby. So for example, supermassive black holes obviously are also the brightest objects in the universe. They often produce these very very powerful astrophysical jets visible from literally the end of the visible universe. Then there are some other systems like this one right here known as Cygnus X1, where the black hole that you see on the left is emitting a lot of x-rays, mostly because it's absorbing a lot of the matter from its very large partner. This is usually referred to as the high mass x-ray binary. And generally that's how a lot of these smaller black holes were discovered as well. So basically when they emit a lot of x-rays, usually that's because they are consuming a lot of matter from their partner. But a couple of years ago, scientists proposed another theoretical concept for the black holes that are not as easily visible but should still be detectable simply through the various tidal interactions and various tidal effects that they exert on their partner star. And so in other words, the black hole itself would probably be more or less quiet, maybe even not producing any x-rays, but the star that the black hole orbits would have very certain, very specific effects observable with modern telescopes. Now tidal effects in this case, I think are easier to understand by using Earth and the Moon. So as you probably know, the moon produces lunar tides, and at the same time the sun also produces solar tides, and once in a while they align and create megatides. But in this case, in this somewhat exaggerated simulation, you can kind of see the tidal bulge produced by the moon, which sort of causes the oceans and the level of the water in the oceans to sort of follow the moon as it orbits around the earth. But naturally, any massive object orbiting another object is going to produce these effects. And so, for example, one of the reasons why Io, the moon of Jupiter, has so many volcanoes is because of the extreme interactions, tidal interactions, with both Jupiter and the nearby moons that essentially cause it to kind of expand and contract from a lot of different angles, causing the moon to have a lot of energy on the inside, which then sort of creates volcanoes. But if nearby moons can create volcanoes on this moon, imagine what a black hole could do to a star. And so essentially, the scientists from the Ohio State University propose that these black holes do exist and very likely cause the star itself to sort of change shape completely, turning into some sort of an ellipsoid, something that should be visible by using modern telescopes. And if we detect a star that does have an ellipsoid formation that seems to repeat periodically and also changes its shape once in a while, sort of similar to what you see in this simulation right here, it really suggests only one thing. Something really massive and something really compact is most likely causing the star to change shape. And the data for this particular star that they investigated has been available for a very very long time. Several telescopes have already investigated it many times, but it's never really been analyzed in this particular way. With the star itself being about 1.7 masses of the sun, but it's already in its red giant stage. So basically it expanded to the point where it's much brighter and also much larger than a typical star. Because of this, it's also naturally much easier for any massive object to distort the shape of the star simply because it doesn't actually hold on to the material as strongly anymore and it's a lot easier to change the shape of this object. And so when analyzing the star known as V723 Monoceros, the scientists visualized this and saw something like this. The star was changing its ellipsoidal shape and all of this was happening quite frequently and also with predictable variability. As if something massive and compact was orbiting around this object roughly every 60 days, and surprisingly in a somewhat circular orbit. And so to the scientists this was clearly an indication that it was very likely some sort of a black hole at a distance of about 1500 light years away from us. Which by the way would make this the closest black hole to the solar system. But there's also something else they found that they really didn't expect. It turns out the mass of this black hole falls into what's known as a mass gap. It also seems to be the least massive black hole ever found. Or at least in like top 3 the least massive black holes. The total mass of this black hole is about 3.3 masses of the sun 
And the total size of this black hole currently stands at around 20 kilometers in diameter, actually a little bit less than that. So this would be a pretty small object in terms of the actual size, even though technically size doesn't really matter much for black holes, because here we're just talking about the size of the black hole shadow. But the mass in this case does matter, and mostly because this is essentially where we are not sure if this is a mass of a typical very large, very massive neutron star, or if it's a mass of a very, very small black hole. But based on the observations of various emissions, it does seem to suggest that this is a black hole and not a neutron star. And so if this is indeed a black hole located around 1500 light years away from us, at 3.3 masses of the Sun, this is probably going to be one of the more interesting black holes discovered in the last few years. Now, with these types of studies though, we do have to be careful, mostly because of the calculations of distances to these stars. It actually happened in the past where the scientists miscalculated the total distance. And so, for example, if in reality this star is much farther away, then this would automatically suggest that the black hole is also more massive, and thus is not actually in this mass gap as it's known, but more likely to be a typical uh, stellar-sized black hole. So recalculating the distance to this star is going to be probably the next priority for some of the follow-up studies. At the same time, confirming various emissions coming from here, and of course recalculating the observations using other telescopes, will help the scientists confirm if maybe this is actually some sort of an ultra-massive neutron star instead. Something that might actually produce even more mystery. Or, for all we know, this is some other exotic, very compact object that other theoretical physicists have predicted exist as well. So in that sense, either way, it's actually a really exciting discovery, something that a lot of follow-up studies will try to resolve. And since this particular system does seem to emit certain X-rays as well, it should be quite possible for the scientists to narrow down exactly what it is and exactly what we're looking at here. For now though, it's a very exciting and a very interesting discovery, something that I'm going to make sure to follow up with another video sometime in the future. And so until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, check out the relevant studies and all of the other links in the description below, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. And either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.